again. Uh, this week's weight loss was four pounds, so quite happy with that. So to celebrate, we're going to have a bit of a treat: uh, fish curry tonight for tea, and I'm going to show you how to cook it, and hopefully all will go well. I'm just going to set you up over there, and um, follow along. Okay, here goes. Just uh, put that there. Right, first thing to do, get the pan on and we're going to, uh, without any oil in, we're going to put four cardamom pods and four cloves. We're just going to lightly toast these for a minute. Now two of these cloves and two of these pods, uh, cardamom pods will go in the curry and two of them the other lot will go in the rice. We're going to make some uh, peel of rice to go with this. And just keep moving them about. Get them heated up. I've actually already half toasted them before I started. Um, so we'll just get this in a couple of minutes. Don't want to burn them. We're just warming them up slightly. If you watch the cloves, you'll see them just ever so slightly expand. Probably about enough. I'm just going to put them on this plate here and what I'll do is I'm just going to, these two pods here, I'm just going to, yeah, that didn't work, crush it open, put it back on and just open them and then I'm going to pick these up and these two up, a bit warm, go over to the rice machine and we're going to stir them into the into the rice cooker. Um, what next is we'll put, if I just give Michael, if you just take this just now, point it at me, or point my face. What we have here is turmeric, and um, move back into the rice cooker. I'm just going to put literally a quarter teaspoon into the rice and uh, what I'll do is I'll just give that a stir around and the cloves are in there and the two cardamom pods are in there so we're quite lucky we've got a rice machine what you do is you wash the rice three times and then fill it up so that the uh, wash and drain it through a sieve so that the the water runs clear and then you put enough water that's about about there on my finger so about an inch above it and then we just close that in is it turned on at the wall? and just start that cooking and just press rice cooking and it's, it's it'll do its own thing so back over here set you up on the thing again get the heat back on now I use nut oil in this obviously you can use what you want I wouldn't use olive oil because it'll give you a taste and I'm going to put about a tablespoon tablespoon and a half of uh, oil in there and we're going to get that nice and warmed up. Shake it around the pan. And give that a minute to just warm up. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> should have put a bay leaf. These are fresh bay leaves from the garden. I should have put them in the rice. So let me just pop that in the rice. Just rip it up. Open the rice up. Thank you. Press that again. Again. Right, so this oil should be getting hot now. And first thing we're going to do is I've got 200 grams of onions. I use frozen onions because they're already chopped up. And it's basically the same thing. We use 200 grams of onions and I've got one red chilli in there. It's just a mild chilli. I suppose you could have it to taste if you want. Um, Start that going. Now, whenever you cook onions like this, the Indians would always say put a bit of salt on the onions. Put about three quarters of a teaspoon there. And that just um, 
draws the moisture out a little bit. So we're going to cook these till they just start to brown a little bit. And as they're getting the chilies on now, we'll um, mellow out the the oils in the chilli and shouldn't hurt you so much later on. So we'll just keep going this for a bit, a couple of minutes. Seat out the way here. Let's see, put that on oh, quite a high heat at the moment. Um, just keep it going. Try and keep it off the sides of the pan because it will burn on the sides of the pan and then you'll get an awful accurate taste of it. Yeah, that's them just, I don't want them totally brown, but they're just starting to go. So the next thing we put in is sugar snap peas. And I have, how many do I have of these? 30, oh, 100 grams, 100 grams of sugar snap peas. You could use okra for that, um, I just don't have any. And this will soften them right up. Now at this point I'm going to put in some the previously lightly toasted cardamom pods and cloves. And I'm also going to add in an equal part of, of ginger, that's uh, root ginger, it's cut finely chopped and finely chopped fresh garlic. Now there happens to be I think 7 cloves of garlic here and 30 grams of ginger, which works out about equal parts. Very important in Indian cooking to have always have equal measures of ginger and garlic. And use root ginger, don't use uh, powdered ginger or anything. Same with garlic, use fresh garlic. I'm going to give that 30 seconds. Need the calories. Hmm? Need the calories. You know. Yeah, out mm -hmm. Right. We're starting to cook down now. We're just going to reduce the heat to half heat now. And the events had an instant. You want the high heat to instantly seal stuff, but then that's it. And then keep it moving about. Oh, dropped a bit. Keep going. Now, and now I'm going to put um, 50 grams of flaked almonds and 50 grams of cashews, and they've been zipped up a little bit in a food box mixer. I'm just going to slightly toast these a bit. 
Turn the heat down even more, I think. Turn it off at the moment, it's enough heat in the pan. Don't let the pan get too hot. If it is getting too hot and stuff starting to stick or that, just turn the heat off for a minute. There's plenty, the metal holds plenty of uh, heat. So. Right, now we're going to do the spices. So the first spice we're going to put in here, <coughs> a teaspoon out, is this Kashmiri red chilli powder. Now, Notice they said Kashmiri red chilli powder. Kashmiri chilli powder, we're going to put about that much, about a teaspoonful. Kashmiri red chilli powder is much, much more mild than normal chilli powder. So, don't put too much in. Or you'll, uh, as I say, if you use normal chilli powder, use a lot less, unless you want it hot. That doesn't fit in there. Uh, about a teaspoonful of turmeric, a heat teaspoonful. We're also going to put in, this is white poppy seeds, about a teaspoonful of them as well. Get the heat back on a wee bit. And what they do now is we're using the, the liquid from the vegetable or the what's in there and we are just toasting out those herbs. So get them well mixed in. And then we just make sure you get all the stuff off the sides of the pan. Get some heat in them, it's just on a medium heat there. And we'll also add oh maybe a third of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, a third of a teaspoon, just black pepper. Obviously that's the taste if you want more, a bit more. So this really, it kind of cleans the pan while it's doing this. As long as you don't get it too hot or you'll burn it. Now, next thing. Is just plain water. And we're going to add this in just at the edge. Edge of the pan. It's about half a cup this now. Add a little bit of time and stir it in. And this is going to form the basis of the sauce, or the gravy as they were saying in there. More, always add to the side of the pan though. Be, that be so about three quarters of a pint in total. Add it in slowly and we'll let that simmer up. Come up to the simmer, come up to the boil, and just let it sit for a second. Oh, I'm choosing to do this on the hottest day of the year and I've had to turn the uh, kitchen fan off so I'm just going to go up the back door. I had to turn the fan off to get so you could hear me but it's um, just a little bit hot. 
thread. Yeah, I wish I could smell this, it's really quite tasty. Now we're going to mellow this down eventually with coconut milk and a mango yogurt at the end. Just let that cook through, get up to the simmer. And we can always add more water if we have to. But when you add water, make sure you let it simmer for a bit otherwise, otherwise if you, if you just sort of put water in and then serve it up, it's going to taste a bit watery. You have to let the the water thicken and form a gravy with all the ingredients that are in it. I'll just give that a couple of minutes. Right, that's simmering away nicely now. Keep it stirring, keep it off. If it goes up the sides, make sure you brush it or you know scrape it back down again so it doesn't end up burning. Now, next ingredient is going to be creamed coconut. Um, how much are we using of that? 32 grams of creamed coconut. Which uh, should really break up in my hand easier. It will it will dissolve down in the heat of the pan anyway, but obviously the smaller you make it, the easier that will be. Wash my hands here. down a bit, we just want it simmering, we don't want it boiling away to nothing. Ginger. Oh you got a real coconut smell off that now. I say now this is going to work out about 107 calories per 100 grams. A serving's probably going to be about 200 grams. Um, so you're two, three hundred grams, whatever you you want. But um, so as you, some might think that's high calorie, but if you work it into your meal plans, work it into your day. I mean, I've hardly had anything to eat today at all. I've only had about 300 calories all day, so I'll be fine. And obviously we're going to have it with rice, and rice how it has its own calorie value, obviously separate to this. Um, just pay attention, whatever kind of rice you use, or however you serve it, just uh, just pay attention to the calories. But as I say, it's, it's like everything else, It's there's no such thing as good food and bad food. This is good food, it's very nutritious, it's got good macros, good levels of fat, and it will have protein with the, the, the fish and the, the prawns that we're going to add. Um, so it's just up to you to work it into your, make sure the calories fit into your daily meal plan. Uh, I think some scissors. Right, so the next thing I'm going to add in here is coconut milk. And coconut milk, we're going to use 235 grams on it, which is, I don't know if you can see that, it's about there on this cup. Um, pour that in, and that will really mellow out all the spices that are there. 
at this point, I'll get this bay leaf. I say we've got a bay leaf tree in our garden, so I'll just throw a few bits of bay leaf in. Um, now it's obviously come off the boil because the, the milk's cooled it down a bit, or the coconut milk, should I say. Uh, you know, if you don't want to use coconut milk, you could just use cream. Um, they are quite high in calories, but as I say, this will make four or five portions probably in total. So, as I say, just be careful. We we'll just bring that back up to simmer. We'll get it simmering again. Turn that down a bit and just let that simmer for a minute. There. Just going to check on the rice off camera just to see how it's going. It should beep when it's done. Make sure it's now, it's nearly done the looks of it. Rice cooker, really good, really good invention, it's so quick. So much less hassle. You just you just cook the uh, sorry. You just wash the rice three times. Uh, the whole the inner pan of the inner pot of the cooker comes out, and you just uh, wash it three times. Sieve it, wash it, sieve it, wash it, sieve it. Put it back in. Fill it to about an inch above above the rice. And it, well, that on my thumb, so it's about an inch. Um, add any herbs and spices you want, and you're fine. Now. This is coriander, uh, in America you call that cilantro, I think, you call it coriander, so I'm just going to put quite a bit of coriander in. Uh, I found the easiest way to do this is just use scissors and snip it in off the bunch and it saves me taking the bands off the bunch and chopping on a chopping board and making a mess, I just snip it. Oh, I love the smell of coriander, it's really, really quite potent when you do this. Now, I personally and my son, we like a lot of coriander, so um, we'll give this little bunch its wee haircut. Probably enough for now. Just put, put that there. Give that a stir in. Now this might need a little bit more water. So just give it. just add a bit more. Because this is what we're obviously you've noticed we haven't put the fish in yet. So it's gonna cook down, so you want it quite watery when you start. That will do. Right, now the fish fish, it's fresh caught, not frozen, fresh caught Scottish haddock and I happen to know because I buy it from the wholesaler and uh, not a fishmonger, we've got local wholesalers here, that this fish was landed last night in Peterhead in the northeast of Scotland. It was in the market this morning about five o'clock and it was brought down to Fife which is about 100 150 miles and we bought it this morning. I've cut, there's two fillets here, I've cut in the sections about that and we'll just gently, it's a bit big one that, this is obviously uncooked and we will just cook them in the the gravy and see there's enough, there's two fillets here which will be enough for two or three people really. Um, Now, once you put the fish in, you want to be careful with the stirring. Make sure the fish is buried underneath the sauce so that it's poaching effectively in its own gravy or in its own sauce here. Now I've got prawns that I'm going to add to. They're already cooked. Um, but cooked and frozen. Uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to get Scotch prawns but they are. They're King prawns from, uh, I think they're from Thailand actually, they're frozen out the supermarket, but fortunately I wasn't able to get any prawns this morning from the wholesaler, even though they are caught in Fife, 
she wasn't able to get in this morning. Um, so as I say, once you've got the fish in there, be very careful because if you start vigorously stirring it, it's all going to break up. So we'll give that. The fish should take six, seven minutes perhaps to cook. Um, it's been cut into small squares. I say it is this on this occasion. It is super fresh. Uh, I know it's provenance. I know where it comes from. Um, I didn't ask which boat it came off of, but the wholesaler can tell you if you ask them. Um, so he's a wholesaler here in Kirkcaldy. And it's actually a lot cheaper. I think the supermarket for had and this is Haddock, Scottish Haddock. I think they're wanting somewhere around 15, 16 pounds sterling per kilo. And we got what did we get here? Uh, well, I can't remember sure what we said. But I paid three pound fifty for two fillets anyway. I know it's about half the price it would have cost in the supermarket. Um I see I'm very gently moving it around because you don't still don't want it to burn on the sides. But just be wary that if you start stirring it too fast, the fish will break up. And the fish is already starting to go white. Now haddock's a very white fish, it's like cod. Um in fact in most of the world people would prefer cod, but here in Scotland we prefer haddock. I think it's got just a little bit more of a flavour to it. Now here I have prawns, these are cooked in frozen prawns that are obviously pretty much defrosted now. These are 225 grams of prawns. So let's put them in. And same thing, we're stirring these in. Now, as they, these are already cooked so all we're really doing with the prawns, turn some of that around, is reheating them. So you don't want to cook them from the start because if you put these in too early they're going to come out like, like rubber. So just put that there, everything's underneath the water if we can. Get the onion off and just put that there. We'll let that simmer, bring the simmer, just turning the heat right down. Left the coriander's in. Right, so the next thing is check that rice again, which hasn't. So far, this rice hasn't actually beeped yet, it usually beeps. It's like a lovely and yellow. Smell the, smell the cardamom pods coming off the rice, which is delicious. Now, the only thing these rice cookers is, you do have to sort of fork it away from the edges to stop it, to make it fluffier. Or they, they do tend to get a bit Oh, that's the that's the beeper now for the, the rice. Um, so just let the rice sit and steam itself. And it should dry up a little bit. A long video of this. Uh, let's have a look at these. That's a haddock. See, they're going white. They're almost cooked. Let's give these another few minutes here. And then right at the end, it's a bit too watery, we'll just let it simmer a bit harder. And right at the end I'm going to stir in some, uh, some low fat mango yoghurt. Some people would like to use a more bitter yoghurt, but I, I, I don't like to have a bitter curry to be honest. So we're going to stir in a, a, a low fat yoghurt, it's a mango one. And uh, that'll just smooth all the flavours out, smooth out the, cool down any spice that's in it, and uh, make it a bit more palatable for us. It gives a nice little fruity twist to the end. So, this will just take a leave. It's taking a lot longer than I thought I would. I thought this would take about 15 minutes, but we are now about half an hour. So. But it's worth it. You get used to eating at home, cooking at home. Take responsibility for your own diet. Take responsibility for your own cooking. Um, 
you could buy this from an Indian takeaway or Indian restaurant and it would be double the calories if not three times the calories they'd use a lot more oil they'd use ghee which is like a clarified butter um, doing it yourself they do that to add more flavour because obviously the more fat the more flavour but there's nothing wrong with fat but in moderation uh, as I say the more you I think important part of this of any weight loss journey is to take responsibility for your your diet and cooking and if you're cooking it and you've sourced all the ingredients even if it's from the supermarket then you know exactly what you're eating every day and you know exactly the amount of calories you're eating every day and what nutrients you're having and um, you can't go far wrong with that and as I say some might consider this to be a slightly high calorific meal but as I say if you work it into your diet work it into your um, calorie allowance work out your total daily energy expenditure subtract 500 calories or whatever it is work this meal into it it's perfectly healthy in fact it's very healthy with all fresh ingredients uh, well, with the exception of the uh, frozen prawns but nothing I could do about that um, and as I say, it should be exceptionally tasty. Let's give it a gentle stir. You see the spice as well. Form little skins on the top. And you just stir them in gently. And as I say, don't stir too, once the fish is in, don't stir too hard because it will maybe put a wee bit too much water in this at the moment now I'm looking at it, but we will be fine. I'll just cook it down a bit. Um, yeah, it's looking good. I'll get that. I'll get that spoon and I'll taste this. I'll taste this. Just gonna taste it before we. You should always really taste it. I'll just taste this off camera, off the sink, so that I can don't burn myself. It's quite nice actually, but I think I'm looking forward to putting the yogurt in because it's a wee bit spicy. Um, the thing with buying fresh chilies is they put a, a guideline of um, <laughs> what the spiciness is. It's not too hot, but it is. It will need a little bit of yogurt just to cool it down. But that's just personal preference. Some people like a lot of heat. I'm, I'm not too bad with heat. My son's quite good with heat. But my wife, for instance, she would definitely want it a wee bit a wee bit cooler than this um, spice wise this is just a little bit watery that's my fault put a wee bit too much water in that second time but you do need the water to sort of poach the fish in but yeah. so make sure you do run the every now and again run the spoon or whatever you're using along the bottom of the pan so that nothing's sticking to it everything's moving Smells smells delicious, it really does. I wish you could smell it. Now obviously this has taken about so far 34 minutes or something, but um there was obviously a bit of preparation beforehand. We had to cut up the vegetables, the garlic, the ginger, the fish, and you know, get everything into bowls beforehand. But you know, within 45 minutes you could we should be having a nice dinner, nice curry. Now if you were to phone for it from a takeaway or a delivery service uh, you'd be lucky to get it in 45 minutes anyway so um, you're not you're not saving any time by ordering a takeaway and I can assure you this will be much more nutritious and far better for you. Just let that simmer down for a bit. And reduce the reduce the liquid volume a bit. When we do the plates, we go. Sun's just going to get the the plates all 
our bowl is warmed up for us. Should really put food into cold plates or into a cold bowl. I will say just take all the heat out too quickly. So you know that it's bubbling quite fiercely but it is only on half heat at the moment. So we just try to reduce down the volume. Of course, as I say, this is the hottest day of the year so far here in Scotland, and uh, filling the uh, filling the uh, kitchen with steam and turning the fan off so you can hear me hasn't <laughs> has not made it very comfortable experience I have to say. But normally, when you had the fat the extraction fan on, you'd be fine. Okay, we should let that simmer down. Couple more minutes. Okay, final thing to do is I've got a, a mango yogurt, it's quite a low fat one, and I'm um, just going to add that in. Like that, fold it through the whole thing. Bring it back to the simmer, turn it down a bit, and and that's it really. Um, what I'll show you now is I'll just show you what the rice looks like when it's cooked. Um, so you can see that it's all uh, it's a fork. It's all fluffy and rice, a wee bit of colour from the turmeric and although you can't smell it, there's a nice smell of the, the green cardamom pod coming off it as well, obviously there's a bay leaf in there So we'll just leave that to sit there and we'll be in this in just a minute So, it's a long enough video I think So. That is how you cook a fish korma. Oh, I'm sorry that was quite a long experience and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something from it. I'm uh, <laughs> sweating so hot in here without the fan on. So I think I'm just going to let that simmer for another minute, put the fan on, cool down a bit and then in 10-15 minutes once it's all moves together we'll, uh, we'll enjoy eating it. So thanks for watching and remember Keep at it, keep, uh, keep on your journey and keep losing mate. Bye, thanks.